Three, mate. We're finally doing DDR4 versus DDR5 testing uh, on AutoCAD, Inventor, and Revit. I'm not doing stuff like Cinebench and Photoshop and stuff and Keyshot. I'm sure plenty of other YouTubers are capable of doing that and doing the stuff that I exist for and that no one else is going to do. All uh, right. So the test bench that I'm going to use is the same test bench that I use for the day one Alder Lake testing. I'll go through the kit, so because yeah, that's pretty important. Uh, it's currently doing one of the tests right now. I'm not going to sit and click every test and oh, right now this one and now this one and now this one. I'll be pretty boring. I'm just going to talk you through the kit, uh, explain what the kit is, what the variables are, and then I'll take you through the results after it's all done. So I'll make this as quick as possible. Right, the testing kit is for DDR5. Uh, the motherboard is the Asus ProArt Creator Wi-Fi Z690 board. The CPU is going to be the Intel 12900K. The cooler is a Thermaltake Tough Liquid 360 all-in-one cooler. I do have a Cooler Master PL240 Flux here, actually, which I was thinking about putting in, but thought the 360 radiator was probably best. Didn't see any reason to drop down to 240 for, for this test. A uh, graphics card is the Asus GeForce RTX 3060. It's none of the tests are GPU-bound, so the, the graphics card's not going to have an impact on any of the tests. The power supply, again, it doesn't make any difference, but it's worth mentioning, is the Tough Power Series 1000 watt from Thermaltake. And the RAM itself, right. So the DDR5 RAM is gonna be Kingston Fury, 32 gigs, two by 16, and the XMP profile is DDR5, 5200 megahertz CL40. So that's the DDR5 RAM, and that's currently in there now running at uh, DDR5 baseline at 4800 megahertz, MCE disabled at stock frequencies on the 12900K. So none of these tests are gonna be run with an overclock. So it's just purely uh, RAM versus RAM, DDR4 versus DDR5, right? For the DDR4 tests, it's impossible to run a like for like because the entire motherboard has to swap, right? So I'm running the Asus Tough Gaming Z690 plus Wi-Fi D4 motherboard. And the RAM, right, the DDR5 RAM is 32 gigs, two by 16. I don't have a 32 gig, two by 16 DDR4 kit, but it doesn't matter because none of the tests are RAM limited. So the DDR4 RAM is gonna be Thermaltake, Tough RAM RGB, and it's DDR4 4400 CL19, that's the XMP profile. But those are the only variables, the motherboard and the RAM. Everything else on the test bench is going to be the same for running the DDR4 kit. So Infomark's just finished on the first test. That's DDR5 baseline, MCE disabled, 12900K stock frequencies. And we've got 67397, which is absolutely pretty much bang on, actually, what I was expecting it to get. And I'm going to now apply the XMP profile, run that, and then I'm going to swap the DDR4 in, run that at baseline, and then run the XMP profile on DDR4, and then I'll report back on what the results are. I'm actually quite curious. I've, I've never run any of the, well, I need to run AutoCAD and Revit as well. I've never run DDR4 yet on any of the uh, 12900K or Alder Lake platforms, so I'm quite curious to see what these are going to be. So, I mean, you're just going to see it like that. I've got to do all these tests, so stay tuned. We'll find out. We made tests are done. Scores are in. You're about to find out. We're going to start with Autodesk Inventor. Inventor 2022. My test. Designed by me. Developed by Kara Group. Autodesk Services Partner based in Holland. Mate, if you're an Inventor user and you've not used Invmark yet, you don't know, want to know how fast your workstation is. What, what, what are you doing? Links in the description. Go download Invmark for free. You can either just run it or you can upload to the leaderboard for free. Compare your workstation against everyone else who uses Inventor. And if you are in need of Autodesk trading services and consulting services, mate, and you're based in Europe, check out Kara Group. They're awesome. Links are all at the top of the leaderboard. Right, but we're going to look at Invmark for Inventor to start with. DDR4 versus DDR5. Let's check it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I was, uh, I was expecting a bit more of a variation. Not going to lie. Contrary to that guy in the comments who apparently just thinks YouTubers should just not bother uploading anything because everything's obvious. Uh, why bother doing every, anything? It is obvious, right? You know, you know, you know who that guy is. No, I was expecting a bit more of a variation, but no, it was absolutely identical across the board. So the run you saw finish during the first 
Uh, in reduction was this top one here, 67.397. That was DDR5 baseline. When XMP was enabled, it went to 67.929, which was an increase of 600 points. But uh, long story short, all these runs are within run to run variants. Inventors, you know, single threaded across the, a lot of its modules. And that results in slight variations, just even by a fraction of a second, it's gonna knock the scores off by a few points here and there. And that's where the variance comes in. But going to DDR4, so the score dropped down to 66,960, but you're talking sort of 400 to 1,000 points between them. When you're in the high 60,000s, that's absolutely meaningless. <laughs> it's insignificant. And then DDR4 with a 4,400 megahertz XMP profile enabled was 67,456, which was higher than the DDR5 baseline. So yeah, conclusion there, no difference at all between DDR4 and DDR5. Broadesk Inventor, given the significant bandwidth increase that DDR5 has over DDR4, safe to say there's, there's no meaningful difference between the two. Moving over to AutoCAD, this is the Catalyst AutoCAD benchmark test. Now it spits out a number of different scores, but some of them are graphics based, which leverage the graphics card. So I didn't really want to include those. I thought I'd keep it simple and just keep CPU and disk score. The disk in the test bench is the Western Digital Black Edition. It's an M.2 NVMe SSD 512 gig. And with DDR5 baseline, it was 488 on the CPU with 492 on the disk score. And then with the XMP profile enabled, it was bizarrely and eerily absolutely identical, which I mean, that's consistency, mate. <laughs> that's really good. And DDR4 baseline 474499. So a slight dip on the CPU, slight increase on the disk, but that could be down to, you know, the, the swap in the motherboard, but it's still absolutely within runner and variance. And then DDR4 XMP, a four back to 488 on the CPU and then a, a very slight two point increase on the disk score. But uh, conclusion on that, yet again, no difference between DDR4 and DDR5 for AutoCAD. Moving over to Revit, uh, there's a lot of interesting things to take from this, but I'll talk about them after I've finished with this chart. But DDR5 baseline 55.59 on the modeling score, 15.86 on the graphics score dropping down to 54.76, which is less than a second drop on the XMP profile. And then we're talking sort of tenths of a second difference with the XMP profile enabled. And DDR4 baseline 55.52, which we're talking hundredths of a second, hundredths of a second difference between DDR4 baseline and DDR5 baseline. And then, yeah, I mean, you can see the rest of it is just nothing in it whatsoever. 54.5 DDR4. Uh, XMP profile enabled. So conclusion on Revit, more of the same, no difference at all between DDR4 and DDR5, but there is differences elsewhere. And that's where we swap back over to my mug. And I just want to quickly give a couple of words on this. So if that's all you came for, DDR4 versus DDR5, then there's your results. No difference at all, mate. But I have seen some big differences between my results today and my results for my day one testing. And this has got nothing to do with RAM. This is just a curious observation that I've made. It's more prevalent with the Revit test. Now, there was a slight difference in the Invmark test, but it's it was about a 1,400-ish point difference. But when I did my day one testing for the Alder Lake review, I used this, the same test bench, the same BIOS settings, the same RAM, the same XMP profile, the same SSD. But today, all my scores are better and not insignificantly. The Revit RFO test, for example, looking at my day one video, my Revit RFO modeling score, for the 12900K stock was 60.54 seconds. That was the end result of dozens and dozens of runs, and it was the best score I could get. And that was still an outstanding score. Today though, I'm getting 55s and 54s. That's not an insignificant gain over day one. For the graphics test, I was getting around 18 seconds on the graphics test. Today, I'm getting around 15 seconds. So there's something to look into there. I don't know what it is. It's not a patch from Autodesk. There's been nothing meaningful from Autodesk's end. I don't think it's a I mean, there has been a BIOS update, but I don't think it's that. I'm more inclined to think it's down to possibly thermals. Uh, there's been some talk. I don't want to, I do not want to go into it here because it would add 10 minutes to the video, but there's some issues with the way the thermal paste spreads and the mounting pressure of the cooler on the CPU, which has an impact on the way the CPU uh, dissipates heat. And that has an impact on the performance ultimately. 
it could be that just slight differences in the way the paste spread maybe certain areas of the cpu in my first tests just were expo or weren't exposed to paste and it was just a bit of performance left on the table there i don't know i mean that sounds unlikely but i don't know what i do know though is everything seems to be running a lot faster now than it was on day one is there something looking new i don't know i can't go back in time and test how things were so just adding this in because i forgot to mention it but on day one testing and on this testing vbs or the core isolation was disabled uh, mce was disabled in both runs and uh, both days uh, there was no local security or virus scanners on the disk on either tests it was the same environment so that wasn't a factor in either of them i don't know what else to say really it was the same environment you know it is what it is but it's better that's a good thing all right anyway i'm gonna leave it there ultimately long story short conclusion DDR4 versus DDR5, AutoCAD Inventor, Revit, no differences whatsoever. So if you're struggling to get a hold of DDR5 RAM and the boards are way too expensive, which they are, well, then it's nothing wrong with going for DDR4. You're not going to be missing out on anything other than just potential future benefits that DDR5 might bring. But by then, who knows if 12th gen, who knows if we're even going to get those benefits on the 12th gen platform or if things will have moved on to another generation. So there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found that interesting. If this helped you out making a decision, drop this video a like, mate, and share it to somebody else who might be interested in watching this. And also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. I've got a whole bunch of gear in here that I'm going to do more testing like this on. And yeah, so subscribe if you want to see more stuff like that. So thanks very much. This has been Tech3D. My name is Neil Cross, and I'll see you next time. Doodles!